हरि ओम चंद्रन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ग्रॉफ्स रिलेटेड टू पॉलिटिकल्स इन अवर प्रीवियस क्लास वी हैड ए डिस्कशन अबाउट ग्रॉफ्स ऑफ ए पॉलिनोमियम एंड यूजिंग ग्रॉफ्स हाउ टू फाइंड जीरोस ऑफ ए पॉलिनोमियम्स वी डिस्कस एंड I have given one example with the second order, second degree polynomials, a quadratic polynomial. So, for a quadratic polynomial, we have a graph of a parabola, and where the parabola touches the x-axis, they are nothing but our zeros of a polynomial. That and all, I have explained by taking one example. For a linear polynomial, we have a straight line graph. For quadratic polynomial, we have a parabola graph. For cubic polynomial, we have a curved graph. That we know. Now, to understand that concept more, we are going to have one example problem. In this example, what is given? They have given some graphs, and we need to find how many zeros. Or they, we need to find number of zeros of the given polynomial. We have six problems under this example. Today we are going to discuss four problems. Now the first graph, the first graph. When we observe this graph properly, we have x-axis and we have a y-axis, and this is the horizon. When we draw the graph of a polynomial, the graph is this is the shape of a graph. The shape of a graph of a polynomial is this. Now, what we need to observe, you need to observe that whether the graph touches the x-axis or not. The first observation. What we need to do is the graph is touches the x-axis or not. Now let us see. Now this is the graph touches the x-axis. At this point, the graph is touching the x-axis. So at how many points it is touching? Only at one point. So. When the graph touches the x-axis at only one point, so you have how many zeros? Only one zero. So the number of zeros, the number of zeros are one. So I have only one zero of a polynomial because the graph touches the x-axis at only one point. Now let us come for the second. Now, this is the graph of a polynomial. Now, in this, the graph of a polynomial is a parabola shape. It is nothing but a parabola shape. Now, whether this parabola touches the x-axis or not? Yes, it is touches at two different points. Here at one point. And here at one point, at two different points, the graph of a polynomial, the graph of a polynomial touches the x-axis, touches or cuts, whatever it may be. So the parabola graph cuts the x-axis at two different points. So how many solutions we have here? Means how many zeros of a polynomial we have? Two zeros of a polynomial. So number of zeros are two. How many zeros we have? Two. They ask you that only. Find the number of zeros of p e of x. Find the number of zeros of p e of x. Now. The graph touches the x-axis at two different points, so that I have number of zeros are two. Now coming to the third graph. 
now here this is the graph of a this is the graph of a polynomial now this graph touches at how many points at how many places the graph touches the x axis or cuts the x axis here one point and here one point and here one point. total at how many points at three points so the number of zeros the number of zeros are three here i have only one zero and here i have two zeros here i have three zeros and the last one sixth graph here also when we observe this is the graph touches the x axis and how many places 1 2 3 at four different points at four different points the graph of a polynomial cuts the x axis so how many zeros we have here so number of zeros are four number of zeros are four so wherever the graph cuts the x axis or touches the x axis there you have zeros of a polynomial there you have a zeros of a polynomial and how many places it touches those many zeros we have here the graph touches the x axis at only one point so that i have only one zero the graph touches at two different points therefore i have number of zeros are two the graph touches the x axis at three different points so number of zeros are three here the graph touches at four different points here the graph touches the x axis at four different point so the number of zeros are four so this is about finding the number of zeros finding the number of zeros by using the graph finding the number of zeros by using the graph so based on this example you have exercise 1 in that exercise 1 also you have six graphs and you need to find how many number of zeros are there that you can try by your own you can finish it very easily now the next concept what we are going to discuss about is the relationship between zeros and the coefficient of a polynomial relationship between zeros of a polynomial and coefficients of a polynomial so now our present topic is relationship between zeros and coefficients of a polynomial basically in this chapter we are going to discuss about two types of polynomials one is quadratic polynomial another one is cubic polynomial we are discussing about only two polynomials one is quadratic means second degree polynomial cubic means third degree polynomial first let us discuss about the second degree polynomial what is the general form of a second degree polynomial the general form of a second degree polynomial is ax square plus bx plus c where a is not equal to c which is nothing but what a quadratic polynomial which is nothing but a quadratic polynomial now as we know that for every quadratic polynomial how many zeros we have number of zeros number of zeros are how many two because the degree of the polynomial is two so that number of zeros are also two as we know that in class 9 the number of zeros by using the factor theorem we are finding the zeros of a polynomial 
so the number of zeros are depending on the degree of a polynomial for a linear polynomial means for a first degree polynomial we have only one solution for a quadratic polynomial means second degree polynomial we have two solutions for a third degree polynomial means for third degree means cubic polynomial we have three solutions like that here we are taking a quadratic polynomial for this definitely we have the number of zeros are two means number of solutions are two for example alpha and beta are the zeros alpha and beta are the zeros of a polynomial now in this what are the coefficients we have coefficients are what are the coefficients we have a comma b comma c are the coefficients so i have alpha and beta are the zeros a b c are the coefficients what is our concept relationship between zeros and coefficients of a polynomial means now i need to frame a relation between the coefficients a b c and the zeros alpha and beta between these three and between these two i need to form a relation what is the relationship between we have a comma b c alpha and beta between these five what is the relation we have what is the relationship we have that we are going to learn today relationship between zeros and coefficients to understand the relationship between zeros and coefficients let me explain with one example so that you can have more idea about the concept directly if i explain the formula and all you may have some confusion by explaining an example problem if i explain the concept definitely you can understand more and you have more clarity about the concept so that let me explain the relationship with one example Let us say one quadratic polynomial x square plus 5x plus 6. It is a quadratic polynomial. Now for this quadratic polynomial, I want to find number of zeros. First, what I need to find alpha and beta means number of zeros I need to find. So the number of zeros we can find by using two methods. First method. using factor theorem second method using factorization because it is a second degree polynomial i can go for factorization what i can go for factorization let us go for it here what is the constant i have 6 here x square coefficient what i have 1 so the product of these two 1 into 6 6 and the factors of 6 2 3 is a 6 And two plus three gives us five. So by multiplying two and three, we get six. By adding two and three, we get five. So that what I can do here: x square plus five x plus six. So x square the five x. I am going to split as. 2x plus 3x. Factorization is nothing but what? Splitting the middle term. Splitting method. Splitting method means the middle value means x term. We are going to make into two parts. You may ask that, sir, 5x I can write as 1x plus 4x, or 4x plus 1x, or 6x minus 1x, 7x minus 2x, like that. Many ways are there. Why we are writing in the form of 2x plus 3x means this is the concept. 
the constant value and the x square coefficient both we should multiply by multiplying these two what we have 6 now go for the factors of 6 so the factors of 6 are 1 6 are 6 2 3 are 6 so 2 3 are 6 and 2 plus 3 gives us 5 by multiplying we are getting 6 by adding we are getting 5 so in that way we need to split the middle term now from these two terms i can take x as common i can take x as common so after taking x as common i have x plus 2 from these two terms i can take plus 3 as common so again i have x plus 2 so here i have x plus 2 and here i have x plus 2 now by taking x plus 2 common here i have x and here i have plus 3 so x plus 3 what these are these are nothing but factors these are nothing but factors of the polynomial so for every second degree polynomial we have two factors when we have two factors it means that we have two zeros of a polynomial that is x plus 2 is equal to 0 that implies x is equal to minus 2 x plus 3 is equal to 0 that implies x is equal to minus 3 what are these these are the zeros of the polynomial so zeros of the polynomial zeros of the polynomial are alpha is equal to minus 2 and beta is equal to minus 3 so what are the zeros of the polynomial we have minus 2 and minus 3 now what is our concept my concept is not finding the zeros of a polynomial my concept is finding the relationship between zeros and coefficients now let us come back here now the coefficients now the given polynomial is in the form of what ax square plus bx plus c when comparing those two the value of a we get 1 the value of b we get 5 the value of c we get 6 and i got the zeros of a polynomial of alpha is equal to minus 2 and beta is equal to minus 3 now we need to find the relationship between these five values we need to find the relationship between these five values how to find the relation let me explain alpha plus beta is equal to minus 2 plus minus 3 that is equal to minus 5 so alpha plus beta alpha plus beta is nothing but what here alpha is one zero of a polynomial beta is another zero of a polynomial these two zeros we are doing addition means sum of the zeros what we are doing sum of the zeros so minus 2 plus minus 3 is equal to minus 5 minus 5 is nothing but i can write as minus 5 by 1 what i can write as minus 5 by 1 now you observe here minus 5 what is the meaning of 5 5 is nothing but b so minus b by 1 what is the value of 1 is nothing but a so finally what i have alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a alpha plus beta is equal to what i have minus b by a that is alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a so here i have a relationship between 
zeros of a polynomial and coefficients of a polynomial alpha plus beta sum of the zeros what is the formula of sum of the zeros minus b by a means that still more you can write it as if you want minus what is the meaning of b b is nothing but what coefficient of x so minus coefficient of x by a what is the meaning of a coefficient of x square coefficient of x square that is a formula for sum of the zeros so alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a that is equal to minus coefficient of x by coefficient of x square next we have another one product of the zeros product of the zeros so product of the zeros means what alpha into beta the value of alpha is minus 2 the value of beta is minus 3 so what i have 6 what 6 can be written as i can write it as 6 by 1 what is the value of 6 6 is nothing but the value of c 1 1 is nothing but the value of a so finally 6 by 1 i can write it as c by a 6 by 1 is nothing but what i can write c by a so i have a formula alpha into beta is equal to c by a. this is another relationship between the zeros and coefficients so sum of the zeros alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a product of the zeros alpha into beta is equal to c by a still more if you want you can write it as what is c c is nothing but constant so constant term by coefficient of constant term by coefficient of x square so this is the relationship between zeros on coefficients of a polynomials relationship between zeros and coefficients of a polynomial when you have a second degree polynomial for every second degree polynomial we have two zeros alpha and beta here x is equal to minus 2 x is equal to minus 3 these are the two zeros of a polynomial and moreover we have a coefficients also here x square coefficient is 1 x coefficient is 5 and 6 is nothing but constant so the value of a is equal to 1 the value of b is equal to 5 the value of c is equal to 6 now we are finding relationship between all these five what is the relation sum of the zeros suppose if you add the zeros if you add the zeros alpha plus beta what we are getting minus b by a means minus coefficient of x by coefficient of x square it is a formula for us what is sum of the zeros of a polynomial means minus b by a that is equal to minus coefficient of x by coefficient of x square next another formula what we have product of zeros alpha into beta minus 2 into minus 3 is equal to 6 it can be written as c by a what is the meaning of c by a constant term by coefficient of x square this is another formula for us so the relationship between zeros and coefficients of a polynomial means sum of the zeros product of the zeros this is about the concept of relation between zeros and coefficients of a polynomial now let us come for the concept of the relationship between zeros and coefficients of a 
polynomial just now we had one example with that example now we have some idea what is the relationship between zeros and a coefficients of a polynomial let us come for the general procedure when we have ax square plus bx plus c is a quadratic polynomial is a quadratic polynomial when we go for factors of this when we go for factors of this definitely we have some factors that is nothing but k into x minus alpha x minus beta i can write as something k is nothing but a constant k into x minus alpha x minus beta here alpha and beta are nothing but what alpha beta or zeros of a polynomial alpha and beta are nothing but zeros of a polynomial now let us come here that implies a x square plus b x plus c is equal to k into let us multiply x into x x square x into minus beta minus beta into x minus alpha into x minus alpha x minus alpha into minus beta plus alpha into beta that implies a x square plus b x plus c is equal to k into x square from these two terms I can take minus x power so minus into alpha plus beta into x plus alpha into beta that implies a x square plus b x plus c is equal to k into x square let us multiply k x minus k into alpha plus beta into x plus k into alpha into beta now left hand side we have a quadratic polynomial right hand side also we have a quadratic polynomial now let us compare the coefficients corresponding coefficients what we are doing comparing the corresponding coefficients compare the corresponding compare the corresponding coefficients compare the corresponding coefficients when we compare the corresponding coefficient here the x coefficient and here the x coefficient and here x square coefficient here x square coefficient here the constant term and here the constant term we need to compare when we compare these two the value of a what I have k here the x coefficient is what b here the x coefficient is what minus k into alpha plus beta minus k into alpha plus beta here what is the constant i have c here what is the constant i have k into alpha beta means when we have this condition b is equal to minus k into alpha plus beta from this alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by k that can be written as minus b by b because a is nothing but equal to k now what i have here alpha plus beta is equal to alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by b so sum of the zeros sum of the zeros is equal to minus b by a sum of the zeros is equal to minus b by a now let us come for the third condition what is the third condition we have c is equal to k into alpha into beta 
c is equal to a into alpha into beta that is alpha into beta is nothing but c by k that is nothing but c by a means here i have a formula is alpha into beta is equal to c by a which is the formula for product of zeros so here you need to remember two formula one is sum of the zeros of a polynomial product of zeros of a polynomial so sum of the zeros of a polynomial is minus b by a product of zeros of a polynomial is c by a b is nothing but coefficient of x a is nothing but coefficient of x square c is nothing but constant of a coefficient of x square this is the general procedure for finding the relationship between zeros and coefficients of a polynomial this is particularly about a second degree polynomial means a quadratic polynomial this you need to have it notes now using this concept let us practice some problems so that you have more clarity about this concept here we have example number 2 what is the question given find the zeros of the quadratic polynomial x square plus 7x plus 10 and when find the relationship between zeros and the coefficients verify the relationship between zeros and the coefficients just now we have seen the relationship between zeros and its coefficients what is the relation sum of the zeros alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a product of the zeros alpha into beta is equal to c by a that relation we need to check so our first step is finding the zeros first we need to find the zeros solution given what is given for us x square plus 7x plus 10 Here x square. What is the constant coefficient we have? One. Here the constant what we have? Ten. So one into ten is nothing but ten. The factors of ten I can write as two fives of ten and two plus five. If I add, I will get seven. So with this information, I am going to split the middle term. How to split it? That implies. x square plus 2x plus 5x plus 10 now from the first two terms i can take x as common so that i have x plus 2 from the next two terms i can take 5 as common again i have x plus 2 here x plus 2 and here x plus 2 so i can take x plus 2 as common by taking x plus 2 common here x and here plus 5 x plus 5 so x plus 2 and x plus 5 are the factors of the polynomial these are nothing but called what factors of a polynomial not zeros of a polynomial now now x plus 2 is equal to 0 x plus 5 is equal to 0 that implies x is equal to minus 2 x is equal to minus 5 so therefore zeros of a polynomial zeros of a polynomial alpha is equal to minus 2 beta is equal to minus 5 now i have zeros of a polynomial next what is given verify the relationship between zeros and the coefficients verify the relationship between zeros and the coefficients so sum of the zeros alpha plus beta sum of the zeros alpha what is the value of alpha minus 2 what is the value of beta minus 5 so minus 2 plus minus 5 which we have minus 7 so it can be written as minus 7 by 1 which can be written as what 
minus 7 by 1 33 equal to minus 7 what is 7 here what is the 7 coefficient of x so coefficient of x by 1 what is 1 here coefficient of x square coefficient of x square so that is alpha plus beta is nothing but minus b by a so here the first relation is true the first relation what we got satisfied so alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a. so we are verifying the relation whether the relation is satisfied or not so alpha plus beta when i calculate we are getting minus 7 it can be written as minus 7 by 1 which is nothing but the relation what we have coefficient of x by coefficient of x square so the first relation is satisfied then we check the second relation what is the second relation i have alpha into beta the alpha value is minus 2 beta value is minus 5 that is nothing but 10 can be written as 10 by 1 10 by 1 what is the value of 10 here 10 is nothing but constant so i have constant term by 1 what is the value of 1 the coefficient of x square coefficient of x square so what we have here alpha into beta is nothing but c by a this is our second relation so finally what we have both relations are satisfied both relations are satisfied so first we are finding zeros of a polynomial then we are verifying the relationship between the zeros and the coefficients sum of the zeros product of the zeros this is about example number 2 now we have example number 3 another same model problem find the zeros of the quadratic polynomial x square minus 3 and verify the relationship between zeros and the coefficient just like our example number 2 now the solution given what is given for us x square minus 3 it is not in the general form of a quadratic polynomial here i have x square term and i have a constant in between what is missing here x term is missing means here i can write it as x square plus 0 into x minus 3 and moreover here it can be as 1 so it is in the form of ax square plus bx plus now we have a general quadratic polynomial so we need to write in that way now let us come for the factorizations now x square minus 3 so x square minus 3 i can write it as root 3 whole square it is in the form of what it is it is in the form of a square minus b square can be written as a plus b into a minus b that implies i can write as x plus root 3 into x minus root 3 so here x plus root 3 and x minus root 3 are factors of this polynomial x plus root 3 x minus root 3 these two are nothing but factors of this polynomial now we can go for zeros of a polynomial now x plus root 3 is equal to 0 x minus root 3 is equal to 0 that implies x is equal to minus root 3 here x is equal to plus root 3 therefore zeros of a polynomial zeros of a polynomial zeros of a 